Mr. P.H. Ravi Kumar, non-executive chairperson with XKS Microfinance. Uh, Mr. Ravi Kumar, morning. This is Nikunj Dalmia from the Mumbai studio. First, a word on the new MFI bill. Now that Reserve morning. Bank of India will be the sole regulator, how will that change life for, for XKS Microfinance? No, not yet. We have, uh, good morning. We have simply crossed one milestone. The cabinet has approved the bill. It has to be placed in the parliament and it has to be approved by the parliament. Uh, we are not aware how long this process would take. We will be very glad if it happens in this session of the parliament. We are keeping our fingers cro crossed. But uh, whenever it gets approved by the parliament and uh, then it moves to Reserve Bank for notifying the regulations under the Act, which process will, in addition, addition to the pa passage of the bill, will take two to three months. So you can say that we are at least another four or five months away from uh, the bill becoming an act and then being made operational. It would uh, cover many of the participants of the MFA bill under Reserve Bank of India as a regulator. I would say the sector benefits tremendously from the fact that uh, uh, Reserve Bank is the best regulator in the country and uh, that, that uh, regulatory oversight will strengthen the uh, MFI sector. Having said that, we must also bear in mind that only those entities which will meet the minimum capitalization requirements which will be prescribed under the Act are met will be covered by Reserve Bank of India and they have to be corporate, corporatized. Those MFIs which don't meet with the capitalization requirements and are run in a trust form will be continue to be governed by the respective state governments. Right. Um, in that sense, then, Mr. Ravi Kumar, will the entire 1120 crores um, written off so far be available for recoveries from the state of Andhra Pradesh? Uh, when would you start collections from AP and what are your expectations in terms of the quantum and the timing of the recoveries? Uh, independent of uh, the passage of the bill, we were already working uh, to find ways of uh, recovering uh, the money due to us uh, within the ambit of the APMFI Act. Uh, the passage of the MFI bill, whenever uh, approved by the parliament and then operationalized, will speed up the process. Uh, it will not happen overnight because you are, uh, we, we are very clear that uh, the, the, we, one thing what has been done by our team is that on the grassroots level, we have continued to remain in touch with the borrowers. Uh, the moment the act becomes operationalized, we would resume lending in AP and over a period of time, and I would see this as somewhere around two to two and a half years, we expect uh, not less than 70 to 80 percent of the amount being recovered. And uh, how do you think that amount will be recovered? Because the kind of uh, lending you've done, at least in the segment you've done, uh, you know, that's not a very, uh, very mm -hmm. strong segment. Uh, no, but uh, if you look at uh, before the passage of the APMFA Act, uh, our recovery was in the 98 uh, to 99%. Our experience in the sector has been that this segment actually has a strong repayment culture. It, it is like uh, for small and medium enterprises, if the working capital cycle is broken, uh, the account gets into difficulty, but the moment there is a uh, restructuring of the debt and uh, uh, lending is resumed, working capital is resumed, the account comes back on stream over a period of two to three years. Same thing in, ap applies in case of these borrowers. As we lend more and since our lending is for productive purposes and as they generate their cash flows, they are uh, highly oriented to repair their commitments. So we are not seeing from a commitment part on part of the borrowers any problem. Hmm. But uh, will the recoveries add to the bottom line and when will the actual cash be received? You know, as you're saying that it would take a couple of months for the bill to... Uh, 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 it would be presumptuous to say that it will happen immediately. Uh, some small portions may happen. Uh, it will happen gradually, as I mentioned, over the next two to two and a half years. Mm. Now, in order to, to capitalize and capture future growth, you need a strong balance sheet, which means either you need more uh, money yes, via the QIP route or you need more capital infusion. Are you on course to raise money uh, by the QIP route? Uh, this, uh, uh, if you if you see the post uh, uh, our uh, uh, write off of the AP portfolio, post the write off of the AP portfolio, we still have a capital adequacy in excess of thirty percent. Uh, we have enough capital to allow for a robust growth through the fiscal year. 2013 and uh, therefore 
I am not saying uh, that capital is not needed. All financial services sector uh, uh, entities need capital as they continue to grow. But uh, there is no dire need of capital at this stage. Having said that, we would definitely look at opportunities. We, you are aware that uh, we have announced a QIP. Markets have been uh, not good. Many, many strong entities which wanted to raise funds through QIP have either shelved the uh, plans or have uh, uh, pruned down the amount to be raised. Uh, we are weighing our opportunities. Right. Uh, Mr. Ravi Kumar, that's the point. I mean, are you exploring opportunities right now uh, or plan to do so in, in the near term, let's say the next six months? Uh, uh, one lesson I have learned in my past assignments, particularly in ICICI Bank, is that uh, capital is raised when it is available and not when you need it. Uh, mm. So any moment we feel there is an opportunity to raise the capital, we would raise capital. Mm. So in terms of an overall uh, growth rate, how will FY13 be different from FY12? Do you think for FY13, SKS is likely to report strong numbers or your AP issue will still continue to, to, to plague your balance sheet? No, I believe that our worst is behind. If you look at Q4 of uh, our operations, uh, that is last quarter of the FY 2012, uh, we have posted a robust growth in the asset uh, book and uh, uh, we expect to be back in the black in the current fiscal, this, the fiscal 2013. What about uh, operations in Andhra Pradesh, given that uh, you know, there were reports suggesting that you're cutting staff there, uh, shutting down branches, what are the business plans going forward in the state now? Yeah. Uh, in the last few days, you would have seen three announcements made by us. Uh, one is in respect of shifting the registered office from uh, Hyderabad to Bombay. The second is in respect of rationalization of branches. And the third is in uh, respect of rationalization of the staff strike. Uh, the shifting of registered office is unlikely to change uh, because uh, uh, we have consciously made the decision because we are a national level micro, so micro finance uh, uh, industry player uh, present in 18 states today and uh, for a financial services sector player uh, to be headquartered the two, two best places in India are Bombay and Delhi and uh, Bombay is the capital where given our continuous fund requirements we would be best placed to be located at so that decision is unlikely to be changed. Rationalization of branches in the short term would have continue to happen. Uh, uh, we are not going to spread ourselves thin, we would be growing uh, uh, in clusters as the bill gets passed and the regulatory framework takes roots, we, are, we have no doubt that the robust growth will return to us. Uh, the rationalization right. of staff, at that point of time, we will review. We, we will definitely review. We have absorbed the cost of the excess staff post right. APMFI Act for almost one and a half years. Right. Uh, there was right. a point beyond which it was becoming difficult for us to continue sure. to absorb this cost and hence these announcements were made. But if growth right. is returning, uh, we would very much like to have the staff back.